Hey, what's up? My name is Chris. <clears throat> Damn. Frog in the throat. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is. Hey, get off of that. Stop rubbing on the tripod. The tripod does not love you. What up? My name is Chris Aponte, and you know why you're here. I know why you're here. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's just get into it. This is the authentic Nike Air Max 1 slash 97 Sean Witherspoon. Came out in, what year did this come out in? I'm looking at the fake one. This pair of shoes came out in 2017. At the time of filming, it is the end of 2022. So it's about a five year old shoe. So right there, that should tell you that it shouldn't look brand spanking new. Like there should be some evidence or details that this box has been somewhere four or five years. All right, so here we go. Now, this is a running theory of mine with these fake boxes, and I can only apply this to 10 and a halfs. A 10 and a half on a Nike box is typically bigger than a 10 and a half on a fake box. I think they only start sizing theirs up at the whole sizes. And I think Nike has like a different way of doing it. So I believe if I got an, a size 11 fake, it would be this size. It is what it is. So best way to tell, I mean, if you just have one in front of you, the shoe should have plenty of wiggle room under here. Okay, so this one, look, I can kind of flap my hand back and forth, right? Plenty of wiggle room. On this fake, I can't really do that. All right, now on the box labels, here's our first sign of aging. Like I said, it's a five-year-old shoe. Maybe it was stored somewhere where there was sunlight. Sunlight got on it, it looks a little sun washed, that's fine. This one looks brand spanking new, so that should give you a pause. Now, as far as the suggested retail tab is concerned, I know the US releases do have this, the Canadian releases do have this in Canadian dollars, but the other releases across the globe typically don't have that, so I wouldn't really call that a good legit checking indicator. I bring up this word a lot when I'm talking about uh, authentication guides, fidelity, and basically it's how pronounced uh, detail is to me in, in my mind or how well you can see something or how clear it is and if you look at the fidelity of the Sean Witherspoon uh, colors here you can clearly see one two three four five six colors right and here you can make them out but it, it's not as bright what that tells me is that it was probably a cheaper printing process for this there's nothing significant about the paper. All right, here we go. Authentic on your right, retail on your left. And my first impression is the size of this air bubble here. Clearly different. This is a genuine size of a size 10 and a half Air Max 1 air bubble. This goes to show another running theory I have about the fake markets and their disdain. I don't know if it's a disdain for Air Max, but they, they really don't focus a whole lot on improving or perfecting Air Maxes. And even though this is one of the hypest releases in the last five years, they still aren't making the air bubble the right size. Okay, the only thing that I can see on the outsole here, if you look at the gray portion of the outsole, you can see that on the retail, there is no finish there, it is just flat. Whereas on this fake, you can see that there is kind of a semi-gloss finish. All right, let's talk about the heel. Now, when you're really studying the back of this here, this is when you really notice the difference of the tooling between an authentic Air Max 1. There's a different thickness and it also gives the impression that the back of the heel is lower on the retail than it is on the fake here. It's not because the upper is still sitting in this tooling the same way. It's just that you see a little bit more of the upper on, a, uh, on an authentic. And here's something simple, but I, I have not seen this messed up with fakes. The medial side of the shoe, if you look at the back, 
the corduroy is going in a vertical pattern just on the medial side and on the lateral side here it's horizontal there's something that the replica community likes to call the sock liner flaw and i'm going to show you what that is and my theory as to why it still hasn't been perfected maybe never will be because this is five six years old there is i would describe as a luminous sheen on a authentic sock liner here on the inside. Um, it even changes color a little bit due to the movement and uh, it's shiny and nice. I have not seen a fake yet that has gotten that right. Um, it's just yellow in there. It's just yellow. There is no real sheen going on in there. Uh, I could give you some better light. Maybe we'll go down a little bit further. Yeah, yeah, it's just yellow. There's no sheen. My theory is that they just can't source the same material and they never could. There's certain really good tells on certain shoes where the original material probably doesn't exist anymore. And they're still making that shoe in the fake markets. So they have to substitute it with something and they just were never able to find this material. All right, here on the medial side, this is pretty straightforward. When you look at that swoosh here, um, if you run your fingers over it on an authentic, that swoosh is barely raised over the corduroy, barely. And on this one, and, and you're just gonna have to trust me by feel here, there's a big bump right here, uh, right at the front or bottom of this swoosh here. Uh, because it's 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 a nice thread, but it's not a real one. So that's another tell as well. You look at the lateral side, and I can finally sort of revel a little bit in the color choices here. Now, this when this shoe came out, it was a massive success, a huge hit. I didn't know anything about the background story of this shoe. I did not know that it was a contest, a designer contest winner. Um, but the second I laid eyes on this shoe, I was like, that is badass. That is awesome. I have never seen corduroy on the upper of a Air Max 97. I have never seen this collection of colors and how kind of well they fit together in my mind. And I have never seen a Air Max 97 upper on an Air Max 1 outsole. There was just a lot going on here and I just, I really liked it. And, and the truth is, is if, if you colored these colors together in a straight line, uh, that's basically like trademarked in my mind to be Sean Witherspoon's colorway. You know, that's like his patented, and I, I patented it in my mind because, you know, you can't patent a color scheme, but um, I can't see these colors in this combination any way else. And the truth of the matter is, is the fake markets are still getting most of the right materials. They're still get, there's the forest green, purple, the teal, the um, salmon, and then the dark gray. I think they're all spot on. The one that's iffy is the, I don't know if you want to call it yellow or just, um, like sunstruck yellow, but it is a little more sunstruck on a retail than it is on a lot of these replicas where it just looks a little more yellow. So that might be a corduroy material that's out of stock. Let's talk about this, these laces here. What I want you to think about is just in your mind, a cord necklace, you know, like a black cord necklace. Th think of how the thickness in your head, what that should be versus a wheat link necklace. Uh, and I think that that's pretty accurate as far as the, the differences and thicknesses here. It should look like small, like that corded one. Now the tongue tags, the black lines that make up the body of this wave here should just basically be thin and narrow uh if they look chunky or or they have kind of jagged edges there's too much thread or if it was a cheaper machine that made them and uh that ain't it now let's talk about the extras now typically on a fake a good fake of this you're gonna get the extra laces 
you're gonna get those extra laces. You're gonna get them typically in bags with a Nike logo on them and a red line. And in one of these bags, you're gonna have extra Velcro tongue tags. Now, that can be the case, or and it is not the case for most retails. That's what you get. However, this lace bag is still attached, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. Um, and again, you can see the difference in, in thicknesses just by looking at these right here. But it's the same thing. We got uh, branded bags, they got red lines. Uh, but some of these have pins. Okay, th this is a van pin. This is a van pin. And this is a smiley face pin. Okay, replica factories don't make these. At least they haven't in the last five, six years. And I don't think they're gonna because they're selling these anyway without them. So why bother? Uh, and then there's a dust bag too that was supposed to come with this, but unfortunately um, I got mine without the dust bag. Uh, but the replica factories don't make that dust bag either. So, and why bother is what I'm saying because they're already selling a ton of these fake ones. So why would they cost themselves extra money for no reason? All right, let's talk about this insole for a sec. Now the insole is the same issue as the sock liner flaw. Actually, this is a better example of what I'm talking about because when I'm showing you the sock liner, there's, there's a lot of light being blocked. For now, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, so, do you see the way the authentic one reflects light when I move it? Now let's see if I turn it this way. See, it's still the one reflecting light. So that is a material that they are just not able to source. It's the same exact thing with this, um, with the sock liner. That being said, uh, I do want to point this out, and this is just a general note, has nothing to do with authentics or not. Uh, the way this was designed um, looks really cool. Okay, you had this uh, smiley face sewn on the heel. But what happens is, and uh, if you've worn this shoe, you know this, there's this piece of uh, nylon underneath here, okay? And this piece of nylon is nice and smooth. Well, that piece of nylon is just rubbing on a felt footbed, which is also nice and smooth. So when you're walking in this shoe, what happens is you put the pressure down on your heel and you're walking and you're walking and you're walking, right? But what's happening is your heel is starting to slide this insole up okay because it's so soft here there's a myriad of ways you can uh, fix that if you want to essentially the end goal is just to make sure that this does not slide so you know just put something over it that's a little bit rough uh, maybe you know velcro or something or you can glue it down tape it whatever you want to do just you know you got to do something so that this doesn't start sliding up the, the back of your, your foot. And then one last thing before I put these insoles back in, there should be some evidence of a date code stamp. I think you can see it now. It's kind of a very faded navy blue uh, numbers there. There should be some kind of evidence of that. Um, so if you don't see that, that doesn't mean that it's fake, but um, by the time you get to that point anyway, you probably found other reasons why you think it might be fake. So. Just like to be thorough. All right, now I'm going to do a collective UV light test. Okay, so here we are under the UV light. Um, one thing that I notice is on the teal line here, the thread that holds the teal in place does not light up on a retail. And this one is lighting up. Uh, I see glue on this retail and that is just a sign that it's probably retail that this fake is actually cleaner. Of course, there's gonna be little pieces of dust. I mean, it's corduroy, nothing notable there. Yeah, and it's the same thing for the threading holding this lace line in place.
So here is the authentic. There are little boxes here that um, make up the threading that holds this lace line in place and they do not light up under UV light. Or this one, they do. I think you can see them clearly now. So that should be a good tell as well. All right, guys. So that's it. Hope I didn't waste too much of your time there. I like to be thorough, but I try to be quick as well. This is the Nike Air Max 1 slash 97 Sean Weatherspoon 2017 authentication guide. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, send me a comment. I will answer you because this channel is not like big um, and I have time. So I will answer you. Make the questions good. Maybe I'll bring them up on the next video. Remember real sneakerheads show love. Real sneakerheads show love.